Okay, all right, now I'm gonna begin the show. Hello, and welcome to I Choose You, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. <laughs> My name is Jeremy Zielek, I'm the host, and Dalton Brown of the group joining me this week, as always, is... Uh, your friend on this show, Ben Montoya. Ian Davis, uh, microbiologist Kurt Jones of the show. Hmm. And uh, Evan Aubrey. I would like the listeners know that Ben rolled his eyes very hard when. Well, I just love how, like, on a dime, you can switch from, like, your regular talking voice to, like, it's a show now! Whoa! (laughs) (laughs) Like, you you need to leave in the, you know, first, like, part of your breath before you actually started the show to exemplify, like, how quickly. You just turned into like cartoon radio show host. Ben, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna differ with you here and say, how do we know that that isn't the real Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, oh, true. Oh, I walk around my apartment alone and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I mean, it's been three years. At what point does the mask you wear become <laughs> oh become your face? And now my dog is drinking water in the background. Thanks, Wicked. Oh. Okay. Um, well, let's. Speaking of drinking, let's start uh, oh. with LaCroix Boys. <laughs> Wicket's what, got a good idea. Yeah. Yes. What beverage are you consuming during this week's episode? Ben's got a tall can. I do have a tall can. Uh, and I, when I cracked it open, it got everywhere. And it's a, a dark brown banana nut muffin imperial stout. Oh, my God. From what the fuck? The that brewery. Sounds, that sounds dense. It is quite <laughs> dense. But it does, in fact, taste... <laughs> Like a banana nut muffin. <laughs> That's really interesting. I don't think I would have ever associated that with a with a beer of some sort. Well, it's pretty good. Def- I would I would not drink this often, but it's like a, it's like a dessert beer. It really mm. is. It's like those stouts you see where it's like chocolate fuck you stout, and it's like ten percent <laughs> ABV, oh, and it's that. like <laughs> it's like it like moves like molasses out of the can kind of situation. Yeah, that's pretty like, close. This, this is little. This is a lot kind of thing. <laughs> ben, what do you got going on? I'm drinking a uh, hazy IPA called Synaptic Plasticity. <laughs> Plasticity, and it kind of looks like a like a you know prog metal like album cover or something. <laughs> like it's got some weird uh, fractals and shit psychedelic yeah. stuff going on i i feel like if the beer you can't like pronounce it that might be a little worrisome for like uh if you're at like a bar and you're like getting plastered it's know, like getting... two micro brew yes <laughs> it's, well it's it's like that um the what's that uh hitchhiker's guide drink the like gargle blaster yeah <laughs> damn someone should just make that as a microbrewery yeah, I'm sure someone's someone's done it. I you do bring up an interesting point, which is uh, I'm more likely to order something at a bar if I can pronounce it right, like just <laughs> reading it. If it's like a very simple uh, word, yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna get it. You're not That's gonna what... go up to a bar and stumble and just be like, "Give me the elastic plasticity." Can I get the synaptic the plasticity hazy IPA Project yeah. X from Mother Earth <laughs> Brewing Company? And they're like, "What?" <laughs> uh, just just give me the thing. Sure my, thing, boss. My trick is if there's like something I want, but it has a long name that I can't like either pronounce mm. or it's just I just know it's too long. I'll just pick a word from it. And just oh. be like, yeah, can I get the? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe it has I... a number next to it, and you could be like, give me a number. That's eight, usually the way to go. Mm. Um, I've got a uh, elephants on parade, classic beer, which is you know a classic um, kind of situation. Uh, I see. What do you got there, Ian? I'm premiering the Polar Raspberry Pink Lemonade. Oh, Ooh. yes. So is that is that is this an actual like fruit drink? Um, no, it is a seltzer. Oh, mm. oh wow. End of the summer. Little, yeah. little lemonade seltzer. Yes. What do you think? I'll I'll say this. I didn't refrigerate it before, but oh. <laughs> so it's warm. Um, it's like slightly below room temp. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not too fruity. It's not too fragrant, like uh, nice. perfumey. Mm. It is. Um, Good go, mouth. Go feel. out. Re- Listen. Pause this episode. <laughs> go to the it. store. Pick some of this up. Come back. I want the listeners on a little secret: is you don't have to pause the episode to go to a store. You, <laughs> you could, could just... be listening to this on the way to the store <laughs> no, while you're buying groceries. <laughs> listeners, listeners, if you want to pause the episode, pod- <laughs> yeah. If you want to experience the show like I am right now. <laughs> Live on air. 
<laughs> pause it. So- wait until. <laughs> Wait until you have work really early in the morning, Sunday night, <laughs> 9 p.m. Crack it open. Put this now. Wait. Unpause. Now we're back. <laughs> Press play. You, yeah. Or 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 they have to, and they have to sit in front of their computer for 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, they get a screenshot of us. Pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you could. Maybe we should start pressing records of our show. Like, Ooh. That's not a bad idea. I actually recently purchased a. Uh, like um like 1940s like radio drama pressed onto vinyl it's kind of cool you purchased a vinyl podcast my brother and my brother and me vinyl edition yes but i but i might i mean that sounds like something i could do you know how they have like nowadays to like make vinyl cool they like have all the fun like colors and patterns like in the vinyl itself oh yeah could we could we just press funky kong into the vinyl Ooh. (laughs) yes with the Lacroix. yeah what I like is like you get to the end of side one, and then we hit uh, like uh, whale hordes, whale whale male. hordes, male lord. <laughs> you know, you've been here enough, long enough. <laughs> and then um, you know how sometimes uh, records they'll they'll like put a little little sound in the like when you get to the end of it and you're mm-hmm. waiting to turn it oh, over. Yeah. Um, it's just the sound of cans cracking repeatedly. <laughs> nice. Well, we could we could do that thing where it's uh, some some records. Once they go to the end, they have like a looping uh, track right. that mm-hmm. just plays the same thing over and over again, and it's just us cracking open uh, cold ones uh, over and forever. over. <laughs> Man, you never have to flip it over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Most people only play the episode for the Lacroix crack. I mean, yeah. yes. it's shown in our like data analytics that after the crack. Listenership just just drops drops off. off. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why. And that's why. Ben, can you do, for the next uh, best of for this season, could you just have an episode of can cracks? An episode? A whole episode? They're probably (laughs) minutes. The ASMR episode. 40 minutes worth. Yeah. I could probably do a LaCroix supercut. I don't know if I'd want to, but I could do it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But just just like us. It's it's all the cracks, and then sometimes it's us like, oops, I spilled my drink on my pants. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Um, but this isn't a show just about spilling drinks on your pants. It's also a show about cooking and eating Pokemon. Each week here on I Choose You, we randomly select a new Pokemon to consume, and we come here to this communal place to share our most ingenious and thoughtful recipes with one another. It's kind of uh, a sacred w- place, honestly. Yes, this is. It's like a holy communion. <laughs> yeah, light a candle, t- t- put the shades down, and enjoy. Yes. <laughs> Listeners, pause this episode. Go get some candles. <laughs> Pour a nice glass of wine. You know, you know the drill. Um, so Draw this down. week we're talking in, about <laughs> cooking and eating Aroros, which is like a magical dinosaur that makes um, glowing sparkles kind of situation. Aurorus? Aurorus? It kind of sounds like you're doing like a Scooby-Doo impersonation. Aurorus? Aurorus. <laughs> Aurorus in this episode of I Choose You at this time of year? <laughs> Entirely located on this podcast feed? <laughs> It's more likely than you think. Jeremy, is your recipe steamed hams? No, it's not. (laughs) Right now, I should have. That'd have been funny. Um, But yes, Aurorus, 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 um, whatever, however you say. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent on this. If this was, Um, if this Pokemon was the name of a beer, nobody's ordering it. (laughs) Oh yeah, no one's no one's saying that out loud. No, no, no. They would say it, and they would say it incorrectly, like I am probably doing. Um, Who won last week? Uh, Me, Evan, Evan. Why don't you start this week's show? So I I purely so I I had two recipes because I was like I'm I'm coming oh. in hot with the puns this week, but I'm only doing one because I couldn't okay. I couldn't decide. But now I, I just like eeny meeny miny mode myself into uh, this week's <laughs> recipe, which <laughs> is um, and it's because Jeremy specifically said little sparkly bits, and it's because this week we're gonna make. Aurora rice breakers gum. <laughs> mm. oh. oh, so these are like the things you get out of that, the checkout aisle. Exactly. So you, you, you. This is the yeah, the big like cup that fits in your cup holder, full of like little cubed gum pieces. Then and and each of those little little flavor crystals that oh. burst open in your mouth with minty flavor are come from oh, the auroras wow. on, the, on the side, right? So. How do you make gum? And uh, 
The I don't. I don't know. know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and un- unlike last week, I'll actually kind of get into it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I I went to, and this is this is a little bit off off uh, script because I went to uh, just gum recipe, and bubble gum is the immediate one that people go to. So I'm I'm gonna use mm. that as like a base, but like you can flavor it how you will. Right. So, <laughs> and and the first ingredient here is gum base. And I oh. don't know what gum base is, but you're going to get a third of a cup of that. You're going to get <laughs> uh, half a cup of confectioner sugar, some corn syrup. Um, instead of glycerin, we're going to, to take the, the little wavy bits off the side of the auroras. And that's mm. your kind of gelatiny, glyceriny substance. Hmm. So you're going to get a, just, just a teaspoon of that. A uh, little bit of... of uh, you know peppermint flavoring whatever you want to do i think the ice crystals and you know the crystals on the auroras themselves might be a little minty fresh uh we'll we'll see yeah Hmm, minty fresh so you're gonna mix mix all of those things together basically and uh the the glycerin you know sheets and everything and you're gonna microwave this mixture for about (laughs) 45 seconds wait so you you say when i make homemade gum i just shove it in the microwave (laughs) yeah that's all you gotta do you know, they, they say usually with like marshmallows, it's like you don't want to put those in the microwave because they will expand and, and ruin your microwave. Apparently, this gum recipe is totally safe. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then you, so you're going to take it out and then you're going to stir it again. And then you're going to put it in for five to 10 second intervals in the microwave just oh to make God. sure it's like completely and utterly like melted into one amalgamous like mixture. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a lot of work. You, I mean, you don't you don't want to ruin your nice microwave, so you yeah. just kind of like take. What care if of I it. had like a gum only microwave? I mean, just, just in case. There's like that guy that has like will it blend like his his special blender for for mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. So I you can go out and buy a microwave. That's fine. So then what you're gonna do is you're dropping this gum mixture on top of uh, your bed of of sugar, just so it like has doesn't you know stick to the the surface that you're working with. And you just kind of knead that together, so it's like okay. a little, little sugary, little minty, and everything. And it become it's kind of like kneading dough. So at the mm-hmm. end, it's not gonna be like too like gummy and sticky on your hands, and you'll have like a good enough piece to work with, right? And then you're mm-hmm. gonna just roll it into like a snake, really long like snake shape, and you're just gonna do like little chops. And then you take mm-hmm. each each of those little chops and you like press it into a cube, and then uh, you just kind of let it let it sit for a little bit, and then mm-hmm. you toss those into your coffee mug shaped uh, gum holder, and you're ready to right. go. Ian, <laughs> um, I've admittedly I've never kept like the gum cup holder uh, device what? in my car, but hmm. what? Uh, temperatures can this gum withstand oh that's that's a great question because i yeah you don't definitely like not a summertime thing i I think like summertime in albuquerque you're just going to end up with like a a cup full of sticky mess Mm -hmm. right that's Uh, the problem is maybe it's during the summertime when it's most hot that you want that minty freshness in your mouth that's that's a fair point yeah i guess your internal temperature down i've never kept gum in my car just in general like it's something that I'd like. Oh, I'd put in there while I'm in there, and I'm gonna take it out when I leave. But like, I don't think right. it's some. Even even if I'm like parking, I'm like, oh, I don't want to leave that in there because it's just gonna get, get all <laughs> gross. Um, will this gum make me the most popular middle schooler? Mm. Oh man, mm, you could you could barter so many things for this gum. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know what I just get thought a of? Pencil topper. Yeah. Get a slap bracelet. <laughs> Yu Gi Oh cards. Yes. yes. Um, I just thought of Eclipse. The, the gum brand Eclipse for the first time in like a decade or something. Do you oh, remember yeah. that? Like, Tell me your opinions on the gum brand Eclipse. It just, I, I remember having the bigger, like, yeah, plastic containers, like, full of them. And they were, like, they were really intense. Like, gum. They are intense. <clears throat> I would say, and I can I just would say more intense than icebreakers. Yes. Well, and I was going to say, like, Aurorus, to me, like, you just nailed it right on the head. Like, this dinosaur just, like, exudes, like, minty. Mm-hmm. icy you know goodness and i'm even willing to say that like your your gum probably would be more in the five gum territory oh. in terms of like intensity <laughs> it would just blast you <laughs> like that's where you're taking me right now i'm, that's, I'm gonna be I'm getting, rolling like, down blasted. like a hill of small balls and giant speakers are gonna be <laughs> pounding on me as i yeah. do it like you just threw me off a cliff into the avalanche that's what you just did yeah man <laughs> that that's a great s- great submerged image. in a pile of goo <laughs> do you guys remember um 
I know like we all are familiar with the Listerine, like the, the strips that melt in your mouth. But mm-hmm. do you remember the yep. balls, like the gel, like the yes. ex- explosive balls that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I do. I do remember those. Yeah, like like, mouthwash gushers. They kind of came in like Tic Tac, like boxes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you just like pop one of those, and yeah, it just like pops like a like a boba in your mouth, (laughs) like a mouthwash boba. (laughs) Yeah, they are like boba shit. (laughs) So, and it's funny because I I haven't had the Listerine ones in a while, but um, my mom really loves. I think she gets them at Trader Joe's, and they're just like these tiny. They're like they're like salmon roe egg sized like balls of, of just pure like peppermint. Or spearmint, oh God. and Dang. it like it almost burns. You, it almost burns your mouth when you pop it open. But it's like <laughs> I'm so minty fresh right now. <laughs> I need. I need to know if uh, the children these days know about the five gum ads because when we were in middle school, mm-hmm. like they're everywhere, and it was like for every YouTube video when I was watching, I don't know, some garbage on cable. It was like. God, you gotta have this fucking gum, and I, I feel like they never, never lived up to the hype of this advertising. There, well, they had such a, a slick yeah. little box too that you they like did. would thumb open, and you're like, oh shit! <laughs> Got every little. They had three rows of five. Do you think uh-huh. the people that were that like those commercials and that packaging appealed to are now all addicted to like jewels? Ooh, <laughs> I feel like it's a, a five gum to jewel pipeline. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting theory. That's sad. And you know that's possible, but jewels are now illegal. So Well, you know, the vapes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, flavored vapes. vapes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll, maybe yeah. I'll, I can ask my kids this week if they know about five gum. <laughs> there was a, there was a weird, well, a weird you should you like be like, do you know the experience to chew five gum? And they're like, what are you talking about? And you like start throwing ice cubes at them. <laughs> I did. Like, uh, it's like to chew five gum. <laughs> last, last week, I can't remember how it came up, but I was like, I meant, oh, we we're, someone was talking about shuffling and I was like, mm. oh, like you guys are familiar with party rock, the party rock anthem. anthem. Did you just like bust out the move <laughs> in the middle of the dance? I never did perfect my shuffling technique, but the yeah. kids were, the kids were like kind of cold on it. They were like, what are you talking about? And so I played them the song and then they were like, oh yeah, like, I guess I, <laughs> I guess I was like one. They're not when this party rocking in the house tonight? <laughs> they aren't. I guess I was like one. I guess I remember like hearing this when I was in the womb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sh- Maybe I was conceived there. to this oh, song. No. <laughs> That's that is likely. First. Did you tell them that LMFAO <laughs> is a uncle nephew <laughs> unit? I got to be honest. Af- after I got that lukewarm reaction on that song, I was like, "All right, let." All I all I said a few times was like, "I got to culture you guys," <laughs> and, then, and then we moved on. Collar pull and move on. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Um, so uh, about the icebreaker gum, those usually come, they're like cubes, right? Yeah. If I'm oh, remembering yeah. correctly, will this also be a cube experience? Absolutely. Yeah. So once, once you in your, you know, snake form, you chop them up and then you have to like do the thing with like, you have to manually kind of like pinch it into your little cube, mm-hmm. but yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, and so I don't know about you, but I, I always thought that the icebreaker cubes were like not big enough. Mm. So you can mm. make them as big as you want. You can just be oh, like chopping yeah. the largest piece of gum you this need. This is a two by two by two inch cube that I'm going to eat. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got. He violently it. raises his hand. I got him. You can't tell me you're making a, a fucking cube and then you're gonna shove that in your round cup holder. Oh <laughs> no! This is a big round hole. Yeah. This, well, uh, we're gonna square that uh, circle in by uh, making the cup holder bigger. Then the cube, and then it can fit inside of it. (laughs) I lost myself there. What happened? I think the answer is square cup holders. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for all of your square drinks. That way, like, (laughs) like the tension to hug a a a coffee cup is even more, like on the corners, and then it doesn't spill in your car. Right. Well, when like when I'm on tour with Zoltan, he like this last tour, he he subsisted mostly on bagels. And milk, like every day, had to get a half gallon of milk, and he would just oh, drink a half that gallon a day. So, but so if you if you had a square cup holder, he could get like the pint size, and that would fit perfectly. <laughs> you just put a quart of milk directly into your car as yep. you're driving along, and then you have a fun mm. like crazy straw that goes from it to your mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's disgusting. All right, gum. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Let's say Ben is Ben. What's your recipe? 
All right. Well, interesting that we're keeping, you know, that uh, Evan brought up, you know, uh, some snacks that you might have as a, you know, child tween, you know, maybe moving into the... I gum a snack, but... (laughs) I mean, gum is snack adjacent. Man, I am so hungry. I'm glad I have this duck with a nose ring. (laughs) That's bubble yum for the children right there. Damn it. I think I think it's a kind of I again I don't speak to children very often. Um, I, the most recent time I spoke to someone who was under the age of eighteen was like two weeks ago, and it was someone's kids, and they're asking mm-hmm. me questions about. And it stuff. wasn't about gum. No, they didn't ask anything about gum. They were they thought it was crazy that I've uh, gone on ten mile hikes. They're like, "Wow, you can walk that much!" And it's yeah, yeah, it's not that bad. man. Kids um, these days, yeah. they didn't they didn't say, Jeremy. Isn't it crazy how um <laughs> the, with the zebra stripe gum it loses flavor after oh. about two minutes? Yes. but it's so cool. Yeah, it's so. Cool. I, and and then and then I tell them uh, <laughs> that it's like you know the best gum are those like trident like tiny little rectangles that come in like a thirty two pack. The layers. You just yeah. Uh, no, 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 not like, the layers. Oh, not the layers, regular, just like, like just like regular ones, like economy sized. Like, yes, yeah. And 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 what's great about them is they last a while, but you can just they're so small you keep shoving them in your mouth until you got like a jumbo wad in there <laughs> that you just like uh, keep around for a while. Guys, guys, we're forgetting about bubble tape, where you would just take a bite out of oh, the roll. Right. Yes. Yeah. That was man. I love to be like you show up to your construction job and then you're like. <laughs> Oh, whoops! I grabbed the wrong tape this morning. Oh. <laughs> and you, and, but you're like, this is still three feet long. I can use it as a yardstick. <laughs> God damn it! And then you split it up with your construction buddies after. Yes, you have a nice yeah. snack. You're all as sitting a on snack. the steel yeah. beam and chewing on gum together. Yeah, really you're all sitting think... like on a steel beam for like lunch, and you like. You like roll it down the line and you all start eating it at the same time. <laughs> but, it, but it's like if you all had like a really long sandwich and you're all yes, eating yeah. it like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a party sub. Yes. Yeah. It's like the party sub of gum. Yes. Oh, I, I love that. You show up to the staff meeting and instead of having like a long sub, it's just a single like <laughs> gum tape that's been rolled out all the way. Yeah. And you and like wrap it around with some like fruit roll up too. God. Oh, man. Uh, um, hey, well, ben, what do you got? Interesting that you say fruit roll up. Um, because when I was looking at Aurorus, um, I was looking at those, you know, like skin flap kind of Aurora Borealis looking things. And I immediately thought fruit roll up. Nice. Oh shit. Hell yeah. And then I was looking, I saw that and was like, okay, so maybe I'm going to lean into this direction. Then I saw these, uh, you know, beautiful gemstones that, uh, Evan mentioned is going to give some icy flavor. I'm going to interpret it a little bit differently, but... I thought about um, a past episode of ours um, where we discussed uh, gushers mm. and Pokemon that have naturally occurring gushers inside them. <laughs> <laughs> this would Mons be one of those. Gush. <clears throat> so, yes, I was thinking that this would be one of those. Um, I did also look... or well, I did see that the... Um, the crystals, quote, the crystals on its body produce freezing air as cold as minus 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very cold. So I'm going to recommend that, you know, you can enjoy these natural gushers, but you have to be very careful at removing them and then also letting them thaw because otherwise yeah. you'll get frostbite. That sounds like colder than dry ice. Yeah, I think it is. Have you guys had frozen, like, have you ever frozen gushers? Oh, no, I is that, not. Is that like people freezing Oreos? Is that like a, a, a sensation well, that people do? It just sounds not good, though, honestly. It sounds hard. No, like but... You get a bite into it, and you're like, chunk, cons- and then you're like, ice your mouth chips open. Consider this. Have you guys ever had frozen grapes? Yes. Yeah. I've used them in... Snack. I've used those in mm. wine, but I've never, like, eaten frozen grapes. Oh, it's a... Man, in the heat of summer, what a nice little treat to yourself. Oh. And isn't a grape just nature's gusher? Fair in point. a manner of speaking yes yeah. but i also think that like the natural inherent qualities of a man-made uh, mass-produced gusher is that it's filled with liquid and then when you freeze it the liquid is too it becomes a solid then oh, wouldn't, you know the gel the gel part the outer layer of the gusher wouldn't that become hard to eat if it's frozen well you you could suck on it and then it melts in your mouth <laughs> so it's like a I reverse want a hard dumpling. candy but it's oh. but it's 
All right, side tangent. Do you think yes. that the liquid of the gusher, when it freezes, it would expand and like rip the yeah. cream <laughs> How, It's the like gusher. when you put a soda in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> they explode. Yes. Um. <clears throat> anyway, so I was thinking of these two ideas, fruit roll-up, uh, gusher. I tried looking up, um, you know, if anyone had uh, tried to do this before, like combine these two snacks, maybe create a uh, uh, natural gusher out of uh, fruit roll-up. Mm-hmm. And what I found was a monstrosity, which <laughs> is uh, known as the super gusher. Oh, yes. Um, which is actually a different kind of fruit roll-up. It's more like the foot-by-the-foot roll-ups. <laughs> um, but basically what you do is you take, like, three packs of gushers and you just, you know, put them all out in a grouping together. And then, like, rubber band ball style, you start to, like, wrap around the, like, foot-by-the-foot, like all around it and then you just end up with this like nasty looking gooey hard uh just it's just candy you know it's just like layers and layers of candy and gushers but it's like gushers within the gusher i just sent y'all a picture thank you of the yeah the it's it's not pretty um (laughs) it's not professional um it's an amateur's job but it is an attempt (laughs) you know i would eat this in a heartbeat (laughs) <laughs> I would I would gobble this shit down. Oh my god. Oh jeez. <laughs> I want to know. Ugh, it looks like you melted the balls at a Chuck E Cheese ball pit. <laughs> it looks into very like melted. a sandwich. <laughs> I thought like with the fruit by the foot you would like lay out the fruit by the foot uh gum tape style and then mm. and then place mm. the gushers single file all the way down and then roll that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. There's uh, this I don't so, know. So how who... about this? You get the fruit roll ups <laughs> and you like lay them next to each other, and then use the fruit by the foot as like tape, so you can connect the uh, the fruit roll ups together. Mm. Just using okay. it like gauze or like yeah. about... <laughs> medical tape. Yes. What about um? You take the fruit by the square. You know the like the ones you hold up to your face. Fruit roll up. <laughs> yeah. Fruit roll up. Yeah. And the square. <laughs> you you lay down the gushers on it. Roll it up. You got a you got like a a, a fruit taquito. Yeah. Oh. A nice uh, gusher cigar, if you will. A good little fruit spliff. <laughs> yes. A gush cigar. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, okay. So I saw that and was like, okay, well, this seems a little bit crazy, but maybe there's something here in terms of a gusher within a gusher. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and then I started looking at other recipes and I found this video from uh, Eater um called uh how to turn fruit roll-ups into gusher shots you can do this um, <laughs> gusher shots excuse me yeah so they were like you remember gushers now you're an adult and you love gushers but you, you love to you'd want to make your own gushers but you also want to get wasted am yeah. i right <laughs> and uh so basically this person makes like weird like rum agar agar gel thing oh my god no I... and uses like fruit roll-ups as like the candy mold and then like like puts this like <laughs> like alcoholic uh wait 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 gelatin so they, thing. They, they make like a fruit roll up into like a cup and then they put the gelatin in it they injection they, they have like there <laughs> they have like you know um uh, like a gel a candy mold that would like fit in the palm of your hand basically okay. um and they line it with fruit roll-up on one side and then they put the little like gel mixture in and they put a you know uh fruit roll up on top to seal it and then they like Mm. press it in and it like seals it and then they ate it and they didn't look super happy with themselves they were like like, this tastes like alcohol it's good it's like a cursed (laughs) lint truffle (laughs) kind of yeah it's like if a lint truffle and gushers like went to college and were like whoa <laughs> i thought i thought you were gonna say that like you you put the gushers in like a jar of vodka and it like absorbs see that would have been pretty smart honestly <laughs> um, you could still do it ben this person kind of went over the top but so what i was thinking is we can kind of make like a artisanal mm. you know version of the super gusher that introduces this like you know cocktail component mm. to it and I'm actually going to, I'm going to, you know, kind of follow for the most part um, some of the similar, like, recipes that I just talked about. But I think the the area where the um, guy went wrong in terms of making the, like, alcoholic, like, gusher gel is that 
he didn't use any like sugar and he used agar agar and alcohol like he basically just like mixed rum and agar agar together and Ben I'm going to I'm going to tell you something that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't even had agar, you know, agar, but just based off of what uh Ian's experiences were yes. <laughs> um I kind of think that it needs a little more flavor to it. Um so I'm going to introduce some corn syrup um to this uh mixture um that gets gelatinized. And I'm actually not going to use agar agar because I'm just going to use regular old gelatin. I think that will um, do the trick um, and not necessarily require getting some funky tastes in there. Um, so uh, you're going to make that um, sort of gel. It's sort of like a jello gelatin concoction. And then you're going to put it in the blender to get it like kind of more extra smooth. Um, and then the uh, you're going to take candy molds. The fruit roll-up component of this recipe is just going to snip right off of the Aurorus' little uh, skin flaps, as I mentioned before. Mm. And I'm imagining they have kind of like a lemon blueberry taste to them. I can mm. see that. Um, so that's going to be your kind of like outside gusher layer is this like, you know, uh, um, wrapping of uh fruit roll up aurora skin and then you're going to pluck off the uh, aurora's gushers and let them thaw um so that you don't you know endanger anyone and mm. then um you're going to throw those in there like squeeze in the alcoholic paste cover it up and then you know uh uh kind of press in the mold so it like sticks all around and seals and uh, let it sit for a little bit and you have yourself a super gusher auroras um, rum shot kind of thing. Interesting. Well, Ben, oh, I, nope. I, this might this might out me a little bit, but it reminded me of um, so back in college, every uh, Super Bowl Sunday was a tradition where our, our friends would make basically vodka soaked gummy bears. Mm, you've very, discussed this, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very very similar to to that, I think. Uh, in the past and then there was one year where we basically tried to take this concoction and fill it inside of like a banana peel because we wanted it to come out eventually like the shape of a banana um we okay. were so close and then we put it in the freezer to like have it set so it's like all like coming together in my mind in like a weird <laughs> cursed way so like uh you, you... So you like you like you like to, you just like we're walking down the street, you find a banana peel, and you're like, oh shit! If we froze some vodka jelly in that. No, it would be like, hilarious. No, I'm I'm in my friend's kitchen, and we have a banana, and we just like cut the top off, and you squeeze out the banana so that you're just left with an intact like peel, right? And you just like pour the mixture into that. Mm. Okay, but then you just have like a a gummy dildo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but we never really got that far because it like someone opened the freezer and then it like spilled everywhere. Oh no! <laughs> that makes it sound like like you guys put it in, and the only thing keeping the contents inside was the door. We, we put it in the like in the door, like where the oh. little like thing is. So like as soon yeah. as you swung it open, it was like. <laughs> oh jeez! Wow! But, yeah, that's it. I I don't I I'm perplexed. I, I can't imagine the need to uh, make something banana shaped just by via freezer. Yeah, I uh, like I said, I'm I'm outing myself a little bit, and I feel like last time Ian Ian came and visited, it was like too much, and he he, like, <laughs> he learned too much. I thought that he knows yeah. too much. The thought that just crossed my mind is like of the of the four of us, I feel like Ben, Jeremy, and I like probably had a very similar like vibe of our college experience, and then Evan was just like blacked out like, well, <laughs> <laughs> well we all went to the same college yes except for evan right so, well, so do, are you pr proposing yeah. that if we all went to like uh i'm sorry evan the, uh seattle, seattle university. university thank yeah. you um that we all would have just like gone fucking hard with our like banana <laughs> frozen banana <laughs> shaped alcohol. cocktails maybe but like i was i was honestly the one on the sidelines it was i was watching all of this <laughs> unfold, the story really. changes bystander yeah. <laughs> interesting that's not what I saw at uh, January, uh, New Year's 2020. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> okay. um, I, 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 look, anyway, I'll call this concoction the uh, the Funky Kong, the uh, mm. jelly banana. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or I'll you wouldn't it call it the banana. Candy Kong? Oh, shit. Yeah, oh, it would. That's wow. really like, good. And then they'd be like, who are you talking about? And then I would Google Candy Kong and then show them a CGI <laughs> monkey with the giant bazongas. And they'll be like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> 
um okay ian what's your recipe well as you know i am microbiologist kurt jones who Uh in the The famous in the year of our lord 1988 did develop the 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 concept and technology to create dippin dots oh Oh, all right ice cream in the future yes (laughs) and before i get in I went to Dippin' Dots website and I went to the the history page, and I just wanted to read you the like most recent uh, saga. The most recent saga? Well, you know they they kind of like account from the year nineteen eighty eight all the way to the present day. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to read you the last paragraph. Up- updated okay. September second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, today Dippin' Dots is a part of J and J Snack Foods. Blah 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 blah. With over thirty years in business. New generations of Dippin' Dots fans emerge, influenced by their young adult parents who grew up eating Dippin' Dots. <laughs> now catering to a generation who does not know a world without Dippin' Dots. The comp- <laughs> <laughs> what would this world possibly be like without astronaut ice cream? Can you believe that? Oh my god, we're old. Oh I mean, God. we weren't even alive when Dippin' Dots was invented, apparently. I, did, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. We, we've been yeah. living in the future this whole time. <laughs> it's truly remarkable. Um, so when I was looking at Aurorus, um, I too was um, attracted to the, the ice bumps on its body. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was thinking, like, well, how can we, like, use these? And so my mind went to, like, oh, nitrogen, frozen nitrogen ice cream. Nice. Mm. And as I'm sure you are aware, that is the technology that makes the Dippin' Dot possible. Mm. So when microbiologist Kurt Jones... <laughs> div- wait, wait. Okay, I just want to say something. Yeah. A microbiologist invented Dippin' Dots? Was he like looking small. at ame- amoebas or something and was like, what if I ate them or something? No, well, he was like, like, how can sm- I make ice cream small? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Jeremy, because I and I quote, microbiologist Kurt Jones invented the beaded ice cream concept in 1988 when he used his knowledge of cryogenic technology and his love of ice cream. <laughs> Dippin' Dots. So it's truly a passion project. Mm. I like to imagine that he had like the big vat of science, like you know, whatever he was doing, and he was just like had a, an ice cream that he was eating at the same time. And, and, and then he it, like, like dropped it in his science liquid. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, wait a minute, this is actually really fucking good. Ice cream ben, caviar. Do you, do you ever look at a, like a, a jug of like liquid nitrogen and you're like, oh, it's science liquid? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The technical Often. term. Um, in my research for a homemade dip and dots recipe, um, it's clear that we like the patent is still like shut up tight for how they actually make <laughs> dip and dots, because the first recipe I found was like mix honey with plain Greek yogurt and then like pipette it onto a tray and freeze that. <laughs> no, and wrong. I was like, that's not a fucking ice cream snack. Like what? That's is... that's lying. Ugh. And then yeah, the one first of all, that's frozen yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and then the the other recipe I found does to their benefit use liquid nitrogen, but in no way there's no warning on the site like hey, handle this with care or like even <laughs> how do you like use it? It's just like, yeah, get your melted ice cream mix and just pour that shit into the liquid nitrogen. Oh, I'm like, no. that's not how you make dip and dots. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you know, I have I've an, I'm going to throw some fun facts at you. Um Oh shit. Uh, so back in ye olden days, like the 18th century, they used to make uh, bullets for guns, um, which were made out of lead, uh, in, in a very interesting way, which is they would actually, what they would do is they would build really tall towers that were like 30 feet tall, and they would, uh, at the top, they would melt the lead, and they would drop the lead through a sieve, mm. the melted lead through a sieve, into a, bo- a barrel of water. And what would happen mm. is as the lead fell through the sieve, and it would fall through the air, it would perfectly form a sphere as yeah. it was falling. And when it entered the water, it would immediately harden and thus form a perfect bullet. Thus, I think the process for Dippin' Dots is similar, where you, oh. at the top of a tall tower, you <laughs> oh, melt ice cream shit. through a sieve, 
and then it falls into a bucket of liquid nitrogen and they perfectly form at the bottom and then you like scoop them out and put them in the uh, the bags that you saw at like baseball stadiums. Damn. Whoa. When when uh, Civil War reenactment enthusiast Kurt Jones combined his <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> interest with <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What I what I've I've kind of like combined the best of both. So okay. um I'm I'm mostly going off of like what I've seen on uh, Cutthroat Kitchen because they do use liquid nitrogen a lot uh, in a pinch. So you get big gloves, you put on the gloves, okay, and then um, normally it's like you have the ice cream mix in a container already, and then you're adding the liquid nitrogen to that. But mm. from what I'm gathering, we have to reverse this process. So you just have like mm. a big vat of the liquid nitrogen, and then you're gonna have like a big pipette of the uh ice cream mixture which mm. isn't just fucking greek yogurt i don't know like where their people are getting what off with, like, accepting that <laughs> um maybe you have like if you really want to go all out you could have like a container of like green ice cream red ice cream blue you know get like so that way you get like multicolored beads mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but in this case i think i'm just gonna go i have for, a question like, are these yeah. different colors different flavors or are they just different colors I think they're just different colors, but you don't say anything, and then people are like, I like the green ones best. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, this one tastes different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so you're just, like, squirting a little bit of it at a time, and then it forms the beads. And then by the time you're done with that, I'm sure all the liquid nitrogen has, like, burned off. Um, but you're left with, like, a really smooth snack where you can take really small bites. You're not going to get that brain freeze. <laughs> so, so my thing with dipping dots yes you don't get brain freeze but you get the thing where it like sticks to your mouth as you're trying to eat them right because it's like so cold that mm. it does that like ice thing right and you got to eat it with like a wooden spoon yeah yeah this is something that i've just thought about do they have to keep dipping dots at a different temperature than ice that's cream? why you can't buy it in stores wow gotta yeah, have, have to the... get like a special freezer do you guys remember at the uh i think it was the Either DeVargas Mall or the Santa Fe Place Mall. I think it was De- I don't care. Um, one of them had like a dip, a isolated Dippin' Dots machine where you could like huh. order your Dippin' Dots and it would like <laughs> beep beep and like nice. deliver it. <laughs> yep. Huh. I don't remember that. At the at the uh, the Chavez Center, there was a Dippin' mm. Dots machine. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Back when I did uh, ye old summer school or not summer school summer camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Camp, 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 camp. camp. <laughs> so that's uh, I got Auroras Dippendatus. Ooh, Dippendatus. I like that. Yes. Going back to the its origins, its mm. Latin roots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am a I am a microbiologist after all. That's that true. is true. <laughs> well, Jeremy. Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I'm last. Um, my recipe is not a snack <laughs> or snack related. Um, so, uh, again, I'm working a little backwards from, um, kind of the name mm. and the, um, uh, the actual, like, conceit here. Mm. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, and, you know, a little earlier this year, I went to a little country called Spain. Did you? Uh, hmm. Why didn't I hear he, about this? Oh, God you won't it. hear the end of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, frequently you would get, uh, rice dishes there, uh, like paella, for example, nice. or like squid ink, uh. Uh, rice, rice. Oh, squid ink. Like, yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> some some um, squid kids might partake. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> and do you, do you know what uh, rice is in Spanish? Arroz. 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 Yes. So this week we're going to make arroz. <laughs> nice. With a Z at the end. Oh. Right. Where does the ink it, come from? Well, I didn't say, I didn't say, I'm, those were oh. examples. This is my own recipe. <laughs> okay. I, and I'm basing uh, uh, it on a recipe called arroz caldo, which is basically, um, it, it, it's kind of like a, uh, uh, like a, like a rice soup kind of situation where mm-hmm. the rice is the base and it has like uh, chicken and stuff in it. Nice. So we're going to replace mm. the chicken with the auroras to make mm. our arroz. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Nice. So... Uh, we got to get our, uh, our uh, some onion, garlic, shallots, ginger, turmeric, uh, auroras, fish sauce, chicken broth, glutinous rice. Um, they use green rice in this recipe. And what I'm hoping is that in perhaps in the Pokemon world, which is a magical land of many fantastic things, that we could perhaps produce a blue rice yeah. to match the color 
of the Auroras Ooh, kind nice. of situation that we're that we're meeting out here. Um, anyway, you uh, you uh, you prepare uh, your rice um, and you uh, mix, you mix basically you cook up your uh, your uh, your meats, chop it up, put it all together, and it's basically kind of like a, a rice. A stew or soup it's a little it's a little thicker than a soup so i'll say it's closer kind of to a stew situation um and you, you get it all together and i think in a certain manner we could do we could serve it like straight up or we could chill it it'll be cool mm. to match the oh. auroras uh uh itself as an ice type yes ian how is the meat prepared like is the meat like roasted grilled roasted. boiled um Mm. <laughs> Boil. It's not boiled. I can tell you that much. Well, we're, what you're gonna do is, um, I think we could go about it multiple ways. Now, obviously, Aurora's is very cold, um, so I don't, I don't know if that would impact it anyway. But usually, I'd just, you know, cut off a nice. Uh, it's got a good underbelly, so that's uh, probably nice and tender. Cut it off, uh, make it into nice little strips. Uh, grill it really quick, so you get a little bit of char on there. And then you uh, chop it up uh, so it's nice and fine. So you like if you had a bit in a spoon, you'd just eat it. You wouldn't have to like cut it or anything. Mm. And then bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Yes, Ian, you have another <laughs> question. Would you consider this a tapas or uh, is it like a big, big hearty? Bowl? It's it's a singular big dish. Meal. Now, now here's the thing: is that uh, tapas is just a style of uh, consuming food. Now, technically, anything oh. could be a tapas. Oh, uh, so is tapas like, is how you eat the food. Yes, that's, food that's, that's, that's the how you eat the Pokemon component it's a state of, of mind. show. Yeah. It is a state of mind. Again, it's just small dishes. So, like, <laughs> if this was served in a very small bowl, then certainly you can make it tapas. <laughs> so, God damn Dippin' it. Dots are tapas. Yes, they're oh, ice cream tapas. Oh. So you, like, go to a restaurant and you get, like, they, like, put, like, five <laughs> Dippin' Dots on, like, a teaspoon and then they bring it out on a plate and then you eat that, and you're like, "Wow, how, what an amazing experience!" Wait, no, actual, actual idea. You get like like waffle cone chip scoops, and you use that to sk- scoop up Dippin' Dots. Yes, <laughs> like like Ooh. it's like a dip. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. good. Jeremy, Jeremy's laughing, but I got two people over here that would love to eat that. That know? sounds good. All right, next time we go to Evan's house, I'm going to request this item. <laughs> the like just... dip and dots chips and salsa like yeah. combo yeah let me climb up to the top of like a 30 foot tower first <laughs> very nice interesting Excellent. selection yeah do you want ben do you want me to review our choices for this week's show Please. yes i already Nubitably. forgot what evan did you how could you forget it was like oh. the main it was like the main thrust Ian. of the first third of the show oh. anyway evan made auroras icebreaker gum that's right Ben made alcoholic Aurora's fruit roll up super gusher. Super gusher. Okay, I was trying to remember how you Ultima phrased it. Ultima gusher, exactly. maybe. Yes. Um, Ian Davis brought us Aurora's uh, dip and dots, and for me, we have Aurora's. So please vote for your favorite recipe. Uh oh. And uh, while we're while we're waiting for the results, my other recipe was going to be a uh, Sororus patch. Mons. Mm. Oh. Is this like Sour Patch Kids? Yeah. I like, okay. I like that. I like that. We uh, we have a conundrum here. Um, is it a tie or is it broken? Did someone it's vote a tie. Twice? Oh. <clears throat> you can say our system might be broken, but it is a tie. Uh-huh. Um, it's a four-way tie. Everyone oh, voted yeah. for someone else. <laughs> Twitter poll. Is this the That's first awesome. four-way tie? No, we for uh, oh of the season I think yes, oh, of the for season sure. sure yeah well, well I think well, we just gotta uh, leave I'll it put to a, the I'll, I'll I'll put a poll on Twitter the day after this episode drops and then we'll leave it to the uh, unwashed masses to decide who uh, who has the best uh, <laughs> recipe this week. <laughs> All right, now, Jeremy, you need to post. You got to be like true to it because whenever you recap, you're like. Oh yeah, Ian's a pile of shit, and then also my, and then you like just the like full right. thing in detail. Episode. So you better like get the titles exactly. Okay, right so for first of all, there's like a 50 character limit on Twitter polls. <laughs> and Jeremy so uses I don't all know if I'll be able to fit in like Ben's Aurora's fruit roll up super gusher. I might just say super gusher. I don't and know. I might win. Yeah, so, that, I've yeah, been. True. I voted for you. I voted for Super Gusher. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, 
All right. Well, let's move move on to the next section of the show, which is called uh, Whale Lord's Mail Horde. It's where we read your comments, questions, and emails sent into ichoosepod at gmail.com. Uh, Evan, I've heard tell that we have a, uh, a recipe from Mike. I Yeah, and I, I again, reprising my role as, as Mr. Mike. Mm. Um, hey, Icy Boys, no recipe this time, but every time oh. the topic of eating a long neck comes up, I have one thought and one thought only. What's up with that neck meat? Probably real <laughs> tender, right? Either that or gigantic dinosaur drumsticks, Fred Flintstone style. Yum, yum. Mm. I feel the same way about giraffes. Thank you, Chef. Mike. What? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he called them long necks, which is what they're called in the Land Before Time mm-hmm. movies. <laughs> I can definitely imagine it. Like, if you were Fred Flintstone and you got really hungry and you started looking over at the, you know, long necks as they were. Just like, chomping on some neck. The the way that it would, like, you know, food mirage would be, like, mm, yeah, like yeah. giant drumstick that ends Fruit in roll the head. Up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think Fred Flintstone is really hungry at work and he like eats the dinosaur he uses as like a crane? Mm, definitely. Like just, just takes a chunk out of it. Yeah. Just starts chomping on it. All right. Now we oh, have. Ian, no. <laughs> oh, God. Ian has committed crimes again. Um, what can I say? I don't know. I This hasn't loaded for me, so I don't know what this is. Um, <laughs> it was more a snack for later. I didn't expect people to just like for the show to take a hard stop <laughs> sorry I, well, okay. I, still, I looked and i couldn't look about. away okay a, well Twitter anyway DM. let's move on to two recipes sent in by pokemaniac chris though not really for the same week but just because of a trick of the timing ben can you tell us what his spupa recipe was sure under duress i'm going to have to say uh spupa more times spupa so Spupa, only five episodes in and already scraping the barrel of Colossian food, huh? Wow. Damn. Oh. <laughs> you can remove Spupa's stiff, wiry fur and then grind its body up and boil it down into a sort of gray-brown nutrient paste. Mm. It's not good, but I guess it's high in protein. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's all you need. Um, it's marketed in Galar and Unova, not in Kalos itself, mind you, under the brand name Spew, the goo that's good for you, or something <laughs> equally god-awful. Uh, like most, quote, superfoods, it won't do any harm, and it's a decent way to get uh, a way of getting several vitamins, but it's pretty overhyped. And that used to be all you needed to know about eating Spupa. But then there's the Spupa Challenge. And if you already know where this is going, you love, are free to stop reading. Is it like the we Sprite love, Challenge? We <laughs> love food challenges here on I Choose You. In fact, every day you should send us in you doing a new food challenge. Oh, oh no. no. Drinking a gallon of milk, eating oh, a tablespoon no. of cinnamon. Maybe you do it at the same time. Drinking a liter of Sprite after eating a banana. Yeah. Freezing the banana in the freezer <laughs> with gummy bears filled with vodka. <laughs> <laughs> um... Anyway, uh, the Spupa Challenge is one of those uh, stupid internet meme challenges like the Cinnamon Challenge. The concept is simple. You just have to eat a Spupa, whole, alive. There are a number of reasons why this is a bad idea. First, among them, is that bristly fur. Whenever something tries to, to eat a pupa, its fur goes stiff and sticks out in all directions as a defense mechanism. If this happens in your mouth, you're reduced to a spluttering wreck, as you try to spit out a ball of angry tumbleweed the size of your entire head. If you manage to swallow a whole live spupa, (laughs) before that happens, you'll probably just die of a perforated esophagus. If it's any consolation, the spupa will die too. Luckily, almost no one who tries the spupa challenge gets that far, because if the first line of defense fails, you can expect a blast of stun spore from inside your own face. Mm. Stun spore is hay fever that made a deal with Satan. Uh, The basic symptoms are uncontrollable, sneezing and periodic muscle spasms, but at point-blank range, it can get so much worse. Nosebleeds, vomiting, muscle pain, full-body rash. It can even weaken your immune system and leave you vulnerable to secondary infections for weeks after. The point is, uh, Pokemon and food are both without are, are both about adventure, but some adventures are not worth it. So no matter how many, no matter how funny it'll be on TikTok, uh, Kalos has been so much has so much better food. And if you must have spupa, stick to the gray paste. You can always wash it down with some watermelon Lacroix. Mm. 
It's like nice. those episodes of Survivor where they have to like eat bugs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Caterpillar goes down the gullet pretty smooth, I've got to say. Mm. All right. <laughs> I'm going to read Pokemaniac Chris's uh, recipe for Auroras this week. And they say, there's got to be a jumping off point here for a hot new podcast about cooking and eating dinosaurs. Auroras are extinct, so no one in Kalos eats them today except for a few of the ultra rich who can get fossils reanimated just for dinner. Mm. And they aren't talking. But we can make some (laughs) educated guesses about what they would taste like. Real paleontologists have done exactly that. Dinosaurs are related to birds and crocodilians, and crocodile, f- <laughs> crocodile, and crocodile famously tastes like chicken. I think it kind of does. Um, so you might guess that dinosaurs would probably taste like chicken too. On the other hand, chicken and crocodile taste that way because those animals have so much white meat made up from fast twitch muscle. I didn't know this. Built for short bursts of activity. Mammals like pigs and cows have a lot more slow twitch muscle built for endurance, which makes up hmm. red meat. Oh, Again, I didn't. I didn't know this. Wow. I'm learning wow. stuff. Slow Auroras, twitch. Auroras is a sauropod, specifically. Oh my god, I'm mispronounce this. Amargosaurus, a medium-sized sail-backed South American sauropod. Sauropods were super grazers, like enormous cows, that moved slowly but constantly and ate as they went. We could expect them to have much more red meat than smaller Mm. dinosaurs. Mm. Of course, cows evolved to eat grass, which only existed at the very end of the age of dinosaurs. Whoa. I didn't know that either. Giant (laughs) Giant sauropods would have eaten conifer, tree ferns, and ginkgo, which would have influenced the taste of their meat, just like how grass-fed and grain-fed beef taste subtly different. For an ice Pokemon like Aurorus, we could expect a, a boreal forest habitat and a diet overwhelmingly dominated by trees like pine and spruce. The end result should be a rich, marbled, somewhat gamey, with a strong Whoa. perfumed herbal wintry undertones of those conifer <laughs> wow. trees. Is that how that Jeez. works? The flavor of Aurorus steaks will stand up well to strong, sweet sauces and should respond equally well to rich and creamy or or tangy and citrusy. As for the LaCroix pairing, this demands something more sophisticated than lemon orange or orange. I think pample mousse would be the way to go. I only wow. know some of those words from Zoo Tycoon where you'd like <laughs> play with dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, um, it, my head canon is in the Pokemon universe. I exist as like a, a food celebrity, of course. Uh-huh. But I go well, naturally. Cup- yeah. I go undercover on my show and I like bust these like rings of rich people eating the fossil Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Call it fossil foods. Oh, Ooh. nice. That's good. Your rage fossil fuels you to take them down. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> um, also, I've got another recipe here from Amy who writes in on the Discord and she says, immediately know what to make with Aurora's rolled ice cream, which brings us back to Evan's Hell favorite recipe. Yeah ice cream burger where someone just chops up a burger and puts it in ice cream <laughs> snip that was off a while that, ago yeah snip off that sale technically you can just roll it up and take a bite out of it to do it right <laughs> wait until it melts into a shimmery liquid and some and chop and scrape on top of the cooler plate until it reaches the desired creamy consistency have the now bald aurora shoot out some icy pop rocks to mix in with it if you so choose Roll it up and serve your Aurorus, oh my god, a Aurorus, like it's a roll in the center. It's a walrus. Uh, in your favorite oh, cup. I see, I or see, paired see. with a de- delicious <laughs> vanillish. Hmm. It'll taste like rainbow paddle pops, which I don't know, uh, which are devastatingly revealed to me was just caramel flavored. I don't know what rainbow <laughs> paddle pops were. That must be an oceanic thing. Um, paddle pops aren't the, like, the popsicles that have like two sticks, right? The, those like, are like... The ones you share with your friends and family, right? I thought so. Up. Yeah. It's, uh, it seemed in between Amy and Poke Me and Aunt Chris that it seemed more of a Australia, New Zealand thing, but maybe not. I'm looking up rainbow. Pa- oh my God. No, these Whoa, are, these this are is wild. fucking nuts. <laughs> Speaking of like when we were talking about crazy yogurt the other day. Let's I, see if I can get that to focus. Nope. Yes. Oh. What is that? Nope. What is the mascot? It's like a lion. It's a lion. Yeah, it's a lion. It doesn't even <laughs> focus. But... <laughs> Can't see it. But this, anyway, this that's like, going on This the looks Twitter. like a bath bomb. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, they're pretty. 
So that, that thanks for writing in. That's uh, emails I choose pod at gmail.com and all that business. All right. Now is the time, the section of the show where we pick next week's Pokemon <laughs> on a section called Pick-A-Mon. Uh, Evan, can you randomly generate a number between, oh my God, I don't have it loaded up exactly. Please forgive me. Um, 650 and 721. I can indeed. Next week will be 655. 655, you say? Why, Evan, that means we're going to do Delphox, which is the final evolution of Phoenix. Nice. Nice. It's a, right. it's a, it's a, uh, Wait, it's a that's fire not true. wizard. I thought the final evolution of that one is, uh, like Braxian or something. No. Hmm. <laughs> no, this is, this is the fox wizard. Yes. Hmm. Fox witch. It, according to according to the gender ratio, it's eighty seven percent male. So I'm gonna go with uh, wizard Mage? on that one. I don't know. It's got a lot of hair coming out of its ears, which also makes me think um, it's more male oriented. <laughs> all right, <laughs> that covers it for all the main sections of the show. Now is time for plugs. Tell us about your shit, Ben. Um. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben C. Montoya, where you'll probably see something along the lines of a podcast that I produced that just recently came out. Oh, sure. And it is uh, called America's Dead. It's about uh, the Grateful Dead. And um, I spent a few months working on it, and I am really interested to hear what people think about it. Um, I'm excited it's out in the world. And... You can uh, hear interviews with the likes of Ezra Koenig from Vampire Weekend, uh, the folks from Animal Collective, Mac DeMarco. Um, You can hear me interview Branford Marsalis, which is pretty fun. Um, And uh, all sorts of other stuff about the Grateful Dead and adjacent Grateful Dead stuff. So um, you can listen to that. It's called America's Dead from Sonos. And you can also listen to a a podcast called... uh, Remotely Curious, where uh, it was produced by my partner, Asia. And in the most recent episode, Travis McElroy and Teresa McElroy of the McElroy family um, answered questions uh, about working from home. Um, which, And you might say, hey, that's kind of boring. But then you're like, hey, there's actually two icy hosts that are featured in that episode asking mm. for advice. And you can hear Travis McElroy tell Ian Davis that he needs softer potato chips and <laughs> that, that he good. should stop drinking LaCroix. So <laughs> there's that. If he only knew. Um, so you can listen to that at Remotely Curious by Dropbox. All right. Cool. Evan. Uh, me. Uh, I'm going to promote this tweet that I've been nonstop laughing at for like the last week, which is uh, Project Grizzly. Uh, in the 1990s, someone had had made a, a suit of armor to deter grizzly bear attacks, and it's just like a video of him getting the shit beat out of him to like test his armor. <laughs> it's incredible. Nice. Highly yeah. recommend. I, Follow I, me I on also, Twitter at e underscore van aubrey. Yes, nice. e underscore van aubrey, and that Twitter account that post of it highly recommended. It's called Psychotronica. Yeah, I've been following it for a couple of years. It's a lot of fun. Nice, um, uh, uh, Ian. This week, I'd like to direct your attention to my wedding photography business, Ian Reynolds Photography. Uh, I am taking bookings. So if you're listening to this show and you're like, you know, I need a real funny person to take my photos at my wedding. Mm. You could, you could li- listen, if you've ever wanted a celebrity to, sh- oh. to photograph your wedding, Damn. You, can, you can hire me for a very reasonable rate I, for the year of our Lord, uh, 2023, 2024. Pretty much any time that isn't that is like after you listen to this, you can book me. If you're out of state, literally, like if you put me in a hotel and you pay for my flight there and back, I will do it for like that cost. Dang, pretty good deal for you if you know what the wedding industry costs these days. Let's have some fun. Uh, Ian Reynolds Photography dot com or Ian Reynolds Photo on Instagram. Nice. Cool. All right, you can follow me at velocity prime one on twitter uh and you can check out my uh writings at the dash avocado.org jeremy zelik that's the dash avocado.org jeremy zelik 
All right, time to wrap up the show. This has been I Choose You, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. You can find us on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or your podcast catcher of choice. If you like our show, make sure to hit us up with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us go up the ranks. If you want more I Choose You goodness, may I suggest checking out our social media pages, I Choose Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Hell, hang out with fellow choosies, send us recipes, see weird posts that we make, all that on our social media pages. If you want to be a part of the I Choose You community, may I suggest going to the I Choose You Discord. Links are available in the episode description, and you can go there, hang out, send in recipes, uh, participate in game nights, all that fun stuff on the I Choose You Discord. Lastly, but not leastly, make sure to check out our official website, ichooseyou.menu. Ichooseyou.menu has a full episode archive and merch store, all designed by one Evan Aubrey. Whoop, whoop. Holy shit. Check it out at ichooseyou.menu. I think that covers everything for the show. So this, I've, I've been your host and Alton Brown of the group, Jeremy Zielik. I've been your friend of the show, Ben Montoya. I've been your microbiologist, Ian Davis. And Evan Aubrey. And to all the choosies out there in Radio Land, in a while, toe to die. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I choose you. Yeah, I choose you. Everybody wants to be a master. Chef. Everybody wants to show their skill. In the kitchen, everybody wants to cook that clauncher. Finny in at the top of the grill. Each time you fry gonna cook it just a little bit better each taste you try boy this froakie is nice and tender it's a whole new world we cook in it's a whole new place to eat we're in season six with some brand new recipes because we're still gonna cook them all and make a pun or two or three Make a pun or two or three.